confronting authors with real questions about the writing process, the difficult and disheartening publishing industry, and why anyone would choose to torture themselves in the world of writing, this is the Literally Podcast with your host, writer, runner, and the literary voice of Ogden, Utah, Case Johnston. Exposing literature, the authors, the business, the process, the Literally Podcast. All right, thank you for listening to this podcast. This episode of Literally is sponsored by Lexicon and Line. Case, tell us a little something about Lexicon and Line. Uh, Lexicon and Line it does three things. They, they are com- communications consultants. They teach professional business writing and speaking courses, and they are research and data evaluation experts. And you can find everything about Lexicon and Line at lexiconandline.com. Please give them a visit, and thank you so much for sponsoring this podcast, Lexicon and Line. Paul E. Lapeer is a poet based in Portland, Oregon, and his poetry has appeared in several small and now defunct presses. He also has an MFA from Pacific University in Creative Writing. My elders, they're old working class folks that hang around in bars, especially in the mornings, playing poker or pull tabs while slowly sipping pints of light beer like American styled pilsners or loggers with their favorite shots of liquors, and they tell me stories about my grandparents, the names of old bars, and the best parties ever. Sovereignty. When I first started writing, I wanted to write about really serious subjects like tribal sovereignty, and what I realized is it's about much more than casinos, fireworks, and discount smoke shop cigarettes. It is also a really hard word to spell. At the edge of the res, I spent most of my day dreaming about fat sacks of weed and trying not to drink any gin. I spent a while wondering about a beautiful black seat woman. I thought about how at the moment I met her, all I wanted was to learn my language and grow out my hair. But that was so many weeks ago, and now all I want to do is party. Pacific Rim Job. On the way up the West Coast, I keep eating Indian salmon with soy sauce and wasabi, and my mind keeps on wandering to what a fine job we've done with fry bread. Sweat. I enter the sweat lodge and I crawl in a circle behind naked men and women, writhing with their heads down to escape the steam. I settle into my place, get quiet, and whisper my prayer. Then I pull out my hand drum and sing 13 songs I make up on the spot. For seven sweltering rounds, I piss on the red-hot rocks. And I don't do this because there are men and women in the lodge or because half of them are white. This is just how I like to sweat. So, yeah, I mean, those are are a few from my chat book. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, can can you give us some background on all of it? I'm based starting with the chapbook, with the collection, you know, what, what poems made it into the chapbook and why they did, so on and so forth. Um, yeah, the, the chapbook was kind of uh, me exploring, um, you know, more heavily one of the topics of my writing, which was uh, just like sort of these short, sad, ironic poems, um, me kind of playing with what is expected of me from the audience or the community that I'm reading for or the, you know, perceived community that I might be from um, and those kind of things. I think um, early on with writing in that, in, you know, in, uh, you know, a setting of study and things like that, I, I sort of wondered what like um, kind of my wealth was as far as um, just material to work with, stories, character, all these kind of uh, details. And I realized that, you know, having a Native American background that I had, you know, loads of just stereotypes, cliches, uh, expectations, and uh, 
so for me, I was just like, oh, well, th- this is going to be fun. I'm going to actually just play with it and, you know, uh, maybe feign towards uh, what you're going to expect um, or lead in a direction that sounds familiar and then just let it all kind of crumble and fall apart. And, you know, for me, that was really funny. And I mean, I guess also uh, just kind of created a lot of space for me to explore my own work, explore identity, uh, you know, where I think, think things are going or not have to have to necessarily, you know, pack, uh, pack up and, uh, be that guy, whatever, whatever that, you know, perception is. Right. So, I mean, uh, for me, that's been fun and, and to watch it change, to see how, you know, at the time when I was writing this, it was kind of like, uh, maybe, uh, maybe more edgy than, than today, but, or like, you know, uh, as sort of a, a time, time stamp for me. Well, just to kind of see where, where, you know, I, 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 you know, kind of like following my education backwards is different writers that I was interested in, different storylines that, uh, you know, sort of fascinated me. Uh, and, and it, and it was, it was pretty concerning it was, uh, because a lot of the details, you know, you know, further into the chat book, um, it, you know, since I am playing with the stereotypes and cliches, I do end up with, uh, you know, really tragic stuff, uh, you know, sort of, uh, the trickster kind of like, uh, you know, coyote is tricky, all those kind of things, um, recur. And, um, to me, that's great because in this way, I'm kind of, uh, you know, making fun of all these things and trying to distance myself. But at the same time, I'm completely embracing them. Like, uh, at times living them and, uh, you know, you know, adding in full circle sort of like tragic stuff, which, you know, to me is, is fun, but also, you know, it's like, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, well, I, you know, I figured out that I'm good at writing dark little decrepit poems and, uh, you know, whatever, yeah. it was fun. Yeah. And, and there, I mean, you're right there. They are there. You know, and the ones you shared with us, they are extremely succinct. Um, and I've, I've written down quite a few notes based on just what your opening was. And I'm, I'm excited to explore that quite a lot more. This is Case Johnson. It's a literally podcast. I thought you were talking to Pacific Northwest poet uh, Paul Rowley. Um, he's sharing some of his poetry with us, his background with us, the way he engages uh, the writing process and what he's done in the past and where he is today. We're podcasting from my home in Ogden, Utah. Paul, where are you today? Are you in Portland? Um, no, I'm in uh, Northwest Montana. That's right, right. What city is it? It's a little tiny town called Summers, Montana, okay. on the north end of Flathead Lake. And how how long have you been there? Um, I've uh, I've been here for a few months. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so when we're looking at the at the, I wanted to get back to a few of the things that you you brought up um, uh, when you're discussing your chapbook, and. Um, for our listeners, can you can you tell us the, the name of the chapbook and when it was published and um, all of that? Um, yeah, the chapbook is titled The Listerine Martini by Paul E. Lapierre. And uh, it was done by Lady Bones. Uh, they're a small press publisher out of uh, Los Angeles now. Mm-hmm. And this was done in, I believe, the fall of 2015 okay so okay so it's uh just like yeah my 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 last book came out in 2015 it feels like 10 years ago doesn't it (laughs) yeah well i mean it's uh you know well i think i think it's interesting to go back sometimes well uh, you know because it is it's it's a question of like why the hell do we do this like oh let me let me see i you know i'm i'm about to start doing this this crazy thing again like, uh, what the hell did I, what was I thinking then, you know? Yeah. And what, what did I think was good or funny or, because re- really like that, that little time span is, is giant, especially when I think about like even just humor, you know, or mm-hmm. like what was, uh, you know, considered to be, you know, okay for, you know, humor and what is not okay. And, yeah. Uh, 
where you just don't, you don't want to go anymore or, you know, too late you already did or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But, but for me, I think all those things like, you know, they, they kind of do matter to me. And like, even just trying to get ready for this was like, well, oh yeah, you know, why, why do I do this? And I, you know, I might think of writers that influenced me and I'll look and say, yeah, geez, like, well, boy, I don't, I don't wish that life on myself, but at the same time, the the work is still being read and, uh, you know, still being kind of mulled over again. So for me, like, uh, you know, I have to do that. I have to check and, and, and look and see, you know, one, the process or like, because I remember, like, for this chat book, I, I moved to even a more remote place than where I'm at now. And I sort of just uh, locked myself in a tiny cabin. And, uh, you know, at first this thing, it, it was entitled The Listerine Martini, but uh, it only had, like, the low spots were, were you know, very obvious and and things got better and, you know... I, I sort of storied it. I, I tried to do as many different like uh, orders as possible, you know, considered all the, all, all the things basically. Like I, you know, initially I wanted to uh, choose your own adventure or have a, a centerfold or, yeah. you know, whatever, just, just some, just crazy stuff. And then of course, you know, everyone's already done it. And, yeah. and, and so for me, I was like, well, well, like still, I had to go back to what do I have? Like at that time, I was living on a tiny, like a, a tiny community on the edge of a reservation. Yeah. And really being, you know, completely alienated by everything, climate, uh, community, just like experience, all these different things. And so I didn't have any distractions. I just had me like mulling over this, uh, you know, thing that I had to do and so when I finally did, I was like, oh, you know, I really boiled this down to like, is like, I've, I've been sickened by it myself, you know, like, yeah. like oh my God, are you, you know, can you really do that? It's like, oh yeah, totally. I have to, you know, like, this is going to be fun. And, you know, as it unravels, hopefully the, there'll be, you know, like chances like this to just talk about like, you know, the process of it, uh, you know, like what you were going through potentially. And, uh, and for me, I was just like, you know. I, I, you know, I had been playing with this, you know, crazy idea of being a writer or putting something out there, and, you know, all up until the point of actually putting it together and, you know, considering, like, you know, what you're comfortable with or what is yeah. humorous to you or any of those kind of things are like, oh, yeah, it's going to be measured. And like, who, who knows? Like, what what are your expectations? Sure. For me, it was, it was just fun to read, like, oh, a, a poetry book, like, sells, like, 200 copies. So I was like, oh, okay, great. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, you know, most of our books sell 200 copies if we're lucky. You know, I mean, <laughs> we'd need, I, someday, right? Someday we'll bust it out. Um, so yeah, I, I, well, I, you know, but, I mean, even that, like, to go back and, uh, you know, whatever, that's fine with me. I, don't, yeah. I mean, that's not not necessarily why I do it. I mean, you know, if I think about it at the time of, of writing this, I still had, you know, uh, some sort of, uh, you know, you know, after school, like continued, uh, interest in, yeah. in my writing. And so, yeah. you know, I would get to go on uh, a residency or, you know, get to go, you know, do workshop again, stuff like that. But it was also at the same time, my, my visual art stuff was, you know, interesting for people. And so I was, I was doing both and, uh, it, it was maddening. I, I really didn't like it, but I, I understood they could both work together and, and do in some ways. And so for, for like the deluxe edition of uh, my chat book, I had a uh, paper made from the weaving ends from my cedar bark. And that was made into like a handmade, you know, it's all the, all these hand, or chat books are hand sewn and like, yeah. you know, they're, with old vintage paper, they've got a letterpress cover. So they're, you know, the, to me, like the artistic aesthetic, I guess, I still, you know, got to have like some, some sort of influence on, on that. And then with the uh, deluxe edition, it, you know, it ended up, ended up being a $200 book, which like people aren't really yeah. going to buy. Um, but, you know, it did make it to, you know, some institution that, 
it's in their rare book collection now. And so for me, that's like, you know, it's, it, it was it was my crazy idea that kept going, and you know there was interest at times. Uh, you know, most of the poems have been published by you know small other small presses or people's you know yeah good maniacal weekend activity. You know that yeah. turned into like <laughs> you know seven issues or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, reality came crashing down, but yeah. I, I don't know. I I still like all those things. Um, and especially now because I, I feel like I I only started writing with the internet and so like I never got paid. You know, I got like subscriptions to shit that I was like well, yeah. whatever. You know, yeah. I was just like oh what I, what the f-? and and then you know continued more of that. Or, you know, and, and even still like with the chapbook, I I get it. It's it's fun to read in bars, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're short. They're you're sort of greasy. They make people laugh, and you know. Yeah. And so, like a lot of times, I'm like, oh well, you know. I I guess like with any of these writing things, like you know, I see comedians. They're you know they at least get two drink tickets, and sometimes that seems yeah. like a thing to me. I was like, well, crap. Like where what. You know, what am I doing? Like, we're working for free, right? Yeah. So, you know, like, but on the other, you know, side of that, there's, you know, far fewer poets, and we, we can apply for all, all sorts of, you know, ridiculousness, uh, all those kind of things. But um, it's still, uh, you know, there's the the fun performance part and uh, all that stuff. But I mean, ultimately, yeah, you know, I mean, I guess, like, yeah, it's like a it's it's a weird thing and I might not necessarily uh view it as a financial thing anymore at a certain point yeah, uh, but yeah. you know like your 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 weird ideas uh you know those whatever you know 200 people that you know might get a chuckle or whatever or, yeah but it's it's you know it's it's worth it though um and it kind of goes back to um what you said a little while ago you said for this chat book you 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 put yourself on the outskirts. You 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 put yourself, made yourself completely alone, right? To 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 write it, to pull it together, to do all the hard work, and then right in the middle of that, when you're telling us that, you used one word that I think is really really important, and I think it speaks a lot to what you're talking about as an artist. And um, you said I had to finish this. You know what I mean? I, I had to do this. It wasn't, you know, I wanted to go out into a small place and be completely alone because I wanted to finish this. You said, uh, you know, I had to do it. Um, what is, what is that? What does that had to do it, uh, mean for people who, for instance, um, don't feel like they have to do it. I mean, yeah, I have, I have no idea. Um, even for me to be back in, in, you know, the community that I grew up in, it is, it is, there, there is like a, a like a strange like full circle thing where, you know, I, I in some ways I can't understand why I want to leave to like such a, a beautiful place with you know so many positive things about it, it but then at the same time I I, I could never imagine myself just uh, you know not being curious about you know reconnecting all these different things that I've like I've always felt you know I've mm-hmm. like uh, being you know in the city in Seattle or Portland or the gorge or coast or, you know, connecting with, uh, you know, you know, family ties that, you know, I, I, where maybe I've never been there before, but like, that's, uh, you know, part of my ancestry or something. So really in this way, I've just been going out and, um, I, I guess in some way, uh, you know, figuring out what the heck this, this story is for me, you know, I mean, I come from, so many different uh, uh, native communities, I guess, um, just from uh, having such a a mixed tribal heritage mm-hmm. and experience. Um, that, that for me, those are those are all really important. Um, but like you know, the the more almost the more that I've gone, the more that I I just keep finding like, oh yeah, well, uh, you know. Uh, what, whatever, like I, I can look at it a, a million different ways, but it, essentially for me, I feel like since it is such a smaller fragment of me than even like I might ethnically look, it's like there's cultural, there's family ties, there's all these different things that is like a, 
it's this bizarre position where I'm in where I'm like, oh, yeah, actually, I'm like, yeah. assimilation works in this weird way right. where, you know, labor shit or, you know, uh, all these different aspects like, like the, these are great, you know, maybe in this community, this is like the, the true one story and like that is the number one thing. But, like, if you have, like, you know, for me, like, seven, eight of those where like, those are all true, like, they're all great, you know, like, we're the best, you right. know, of mm-hmm. course, you know. But, you know, then, then I'm just as mixed on, like, uh, you know, I guess my, uh, you know, European side. And, and you know, like, uh, just one second. Yeah, that's actually no one, nobody ever comes over here, ever. <laughs> I know. I think you're lying to us. You're in Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't even remember what the fuck I was talking about. Now. <laughs> you were like, uh, "Oh, it's okay. I got a question for you. We'll go from there." But well, and I was gonna say okay. right before that question, it sounds a lot like podcasting uh, financially there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, whatever. It just seems like to me, like. I mean, for years, I've well, again, like when uh, about the time of the, the my chat book, I was really looking at all these different ways to do it, and basically being like, okay, well, all the things that were the established things are like fucked now, you know, or like who cares, like what, whatever, your names in that thing are great, like you know, yeah, yep. uh, other bums I know have been in that, like who cares, like, uh, and, and now that you're you're starting to see, I think, like a lot of the publishing or ways to get your work out there have changed and they're, you know, they're changing across the board. Like probably like, you know, writers are, of course are going to be slow and obnoxious and, you know, all the gatekeepers of everywhere are going to be threatened. And you know what I mean? Then if you go through this whole cycle of like, what's going to work and you know, clearly everything keeps changing really fast, but I think they're doing this independent kind of stuff. And that's like why the, you know, the chat book is like just, you know, someone I found online that looks cool and, you know, they turned out to be cool. I lucked out, but like, we really don't know what the hell we're doing no. except for, you know, to make, to make the thing and make it feel good and make it, you know, have real stuff about it. Uh, you know, and then like learn from your mistakes or whatever, you know, it's like, to me, that's like the, doing a podcast is more exciting. Cause I was like, who's, who's doing them? And you know, there was a couple that were, you know, very produced, very much like very, very still, you know, establishment, you know, jumping on a, a cool thing. But the more that I hear, like, you know, the like at least interesting, you know, you know, people's experience is like really happening in real time is, you know, that's fun for me. You know, who uses podcasting a lot from what I've seen in the industry are minority voices uh, because it, it's a way it's an even playing field. You just got to you just got to start a podcast and get your voice out there. And I, and I think um, the minority communities have really embraced that. Um, which is kind of fun to see. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's great. As long as it's it's fun and gets better, and you know, it isn't like this totally serious bummer time. You know, I, I've, <laughs> I've looked for podcasts that had really fun titles, really fun names, and then you know, it just sounded like you know, I don't know, <laughs> some some angry bandwagon class or something, and I was yeah. like, oh, uh, yeah, like whatever. Yeah. Yeah, well, but, we're we're drinking beer, so you know, we at least yeah, got that going for good. us. Yeah, yeah, we uh we always start that right. <laughs> um, so what? I I think my my question now is, what's keep? I mean, we talked about what got you to this point where there's the chat book. Um, obviously, and I know exactly what you mean in the sense of you send it out there, you have no idea what the hell is going to happen to it. Um, who's it really for? I've asked myself that a m- times a million times. Um, why do I keep writing? Um, where are you going now? Um, and what is that? What is that drive? What is the drive that's keeping you writing now as, as a, as a poet in, 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 in this time period, um, with these things happening, many different things happening across the cultural landscape. I mean, what's, what's, I mean, now that you're out there, isolated again, is the poetry coming? Uh, well, yeah, I think, I mean, it, it's good because it just comes on sometimes, especially if I'm busy with other projects. And um, But, like, this, this crazy urge just comes over me, like, uh, probably last month. 
I was in Missoula and it just seemed like everyone was having so much fun. You know, it was, it was beautiful outside. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was just, it was just incredible. And, uh, so I had to look up an open mic and, um, just go in there and read. I'd written some new stuff and I was like, Oh, this is, this is going to be fun. I, you know, I'm going to read a couple things from my chat book and read new work and see how it goes. And, you know, in some of these smaller towns, you get a mix of, of everything at an open mic. It could be, you know, acoustic guitars yeah. or a singer or, a, you know, who knows, a puppet person, yeah. any of those kind of things. And, and so for me, it's like kind of exciting because I'm like, I'm, I already know that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, well, so in, so, so it was just like this super decrepit, and I, I keep saying that, but th- this was a, gr- a gross poem. It was like right after, I, I guess maybe it was longer, but uh, after Bourdain died, I was uh, like, oh, yeah. like, what a what a bummer, you know? Like, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like, he, like bacon wasn't enough, you know? He couldn't be yeah. like, well, whatever, tomorrow I get bacon. Yeah. And I, like, just be done with the day. You know what? Uh, and, I was I was pissed and sad. That one affected me. You know that one. Well, yeah. Me. I mean, I guess like I mean, I, I it was enough for me to write a yeah a poem of, about like you know being a, a restaurant bum myself who you know uh, you know gave the writing thing a whirl stuff like that. So um, I I just went and read it at an open mic and it, in Montana you can have like a whole family at the bar. And right. That right. Thing, so yeah. So um, so I I read my my poetry and like you know the the back just like goes to the patio and it just progressively gets the, you know, just a a handful of like other performers laughing. So, um, it it was, you know, it's fun. It's like, and and I hadn't been, you know, I hadn't done anything writing wise for like a year, you know, I I did a a podcast thing, um, which, you know, it's, it's just become a lot more sporadic, but anytime that I get a chance, you know, to do something that, uh, might work with someone else's project or I'll see even just like, I, uh, you know, I uh, help with the whole, you know, I see like a format kind of developing more out of people who are podcasting things that, you know, can be quite boring, you know, poetry, uh, you know, a, like a night of poetry. Oh, we're going to have eight poets. Tonight. It's like, Oh yeah. Like that's, you know, oh, like, yeah. who's, who's going to hear that? You know, no one's going to hear that. <laughs> and, yeah. and so, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a, you know, it's a, I think it's a fun, fun, you know, you know, you can write as short as, as silly as, you know, playful as, you know, deep of, of all those kind of things if you want. And, you know, cause sometimes like I see fiction writers, like you know, they have to go like restore order at the, you know, <laughs> at the reading and yeah. get people into like, you know, page 237. Oh, God. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, like, yeah, like good luck, man. Uh, I, I know. You know. No, no, readings are not for prose people. They're just not. And it's f- I mean, it's, readings it's are for poets, tough. you know, because you can't unless they I've been to too many readings like when a, when a fiction writer or even a creative nonfiction writer they spend oh, yeah, no, 15 uh, minutes introducing the chapter, you know. Yeah. And then it's 15 minutes of the chapter, then it's 15 minutes talking about the chapter. And you're like, holy shit, shut up. Shut yeah, up. no, I mean, yeah, everyone's lost. But, oh, you know, I mean, yeah. I guess, like, I, I, why you keep trying is, you know, you probably still, you know, obviously uh, some of those readings you go to and you're like, oh, I can't believe, like, whatever, I'm there, like, gone. Like, yeah, yeah just just keep doing that. Like, I don't care. Like, I don't care the set out. Just, just like, you know, yeah, it's, it's this amazing thing. Um, I guess that's one thing that I do do notice I miss is being around some of that stuff where I don't really have to plan it. I can, you know, like just sneak off to some, some really quality, uh, you know, maybe craft talk or someone is reading in town where it's just like, everything goes back to like practically the innocence of being a kid, you know, before bed, getting like the story time where you know everything where it is in your, in your imagination, like as it's going on, it's like, I mean, it's it's a, just like uh, you know across the board great human experience, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I do. I you know I I miss that stuff, but uh, I mean for me that's I guess that's what it's about. If you can you know shut up a room, turn it into one, yeah. mm-hmm. 
you know, it's like, yeah, that feels so amazing because you know that you were like kind of like able to be on the other end of that where, you know, you know, something is enjoyable and, um, yeah, meaningful. So, yeah, I, I agree. And, um, and I've listened to Paul's, uh, Paul poetry for, well, I mean, for a couple of years there in a row when we were in school together and I always liked it, you know, and I think that's kind of like, um, when I look for people to be on the podcast, I got to like their stuff. You know, I mean, that's kind of my, that's kind of my test. And one question about what you said earlier about change and watching, watching yourself grow. What have you seen? I mean, if you can pin it down, if there's any real, if there's any concrete examples of um, what you were doing earlier in your poetry and what you may not be doing now. And I know you brought it up that culturally a lot of stuff has changed since 2000, even since 2015. Stuff we you 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 places you wouldn't want to go or places you you probably shouldn't have went or you already you, you went already went there and like you said before, um, what is what have you seen in yours? I mean, I know personally with mine, all I did when I first started writing was try to be David Sedaris. You know, I tried to be funny, and now I don't write anything funny anymore. And I can't even do it. I try to write something funny, and it's just it's, it's horseshit. And that's being just completely honest with myself. Um, what have, what have you seen? Have you seen something, things that you say have dropped off from your poetry from the beginning? Well, I mean, I, I guess it's, I don't think it's dropped off. Like it re- really, you know, within poetry, but yeah, like other writing, I feel like I can write about other things and actually, you know, take something seriously and sort of like, you know, not just go for the, you know, the first funny kind of thing that comes to mind or keep it going and, and in the past, I feel like, yeah, I mean, you know, this is, those are like great days of just like, uh, you know, a lot of irony and nihilism and, you know, just enjoying the the narcissistic pursuit of being, a, you know, a, an educated writer and all those kind of things. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, it's fun. It's like, like everyone is kind of like, whatever like you know you you know whether or not people would you know i i had so many people just come to me and just immediately start talking about bukowski to me and you know i mean i enjoyed bukowski but i was like you know a lot of it was like you know i don't remember that i was like a, you know i was really quite young when i read that and yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah i guess it was good or you know all these kind of things i think just kind of come into perspective a little bit more and you know i i i was you know like i said just you know, I I like jokes. I like the I like the you know the turn in in poetry. It's like uh, you know, it doesn't always have to be you know me dropping it down and kind of making things sort of uh, meaningless and you know. So like uh, I guess like yeah, some of that stuff. Uh, I mean, and you know, with the chapbook, it was I really liked uh, Richard Brodigan, and I, I like this like these sort of sappy, sad. Uh, you know, little poems about his broken heart and what, you know what I mean? It, it yeah. was just like a great repetition. And so I was like, Oh, like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm totally going to be like that guy who, you know, you know, in these same cities as him, like, you know, uh, you know, weekly motel, like whatever, all, all that kind of overdone bum writer stuff. But I, I was like, you know, it was fun for me. It's great. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, I'm, like, yeah, I know, I know how to, eat at a, a, a 7-Eleven and not, you know, like, I might don't have great health, but you know, it's like, I, I, I can do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Um, yeah, is. Uh, this is Case Johnson. This is the literally podcast. Uh, we're broadcasting from my home in, in Ogden, Utah. Today, our guest is, uh, Paul Rowley. He's a poet from the Pacific Northwest. Um, sharing a lot of, uh, thoughts about really what it is to be, be a poet, be an artist, um, what motivation comes from and, and, uh, insights into the bar life in Montana. Um, which, you know, I'm in Utah, you can't even have kids or families within 25 feet of the bar entrance or whatever. Yeah. You know? And so it's like, you don't, you don't have to worry. You can definitely walk into a bar and say, fuck, and you're not going to worry about the kids in the back. That's for damn sure. Um, so we've got about five minutes left. Um, and I wanted to talk really briefly, and you can take it wherever you want to, because I've really enjoyed just I've really enjoyed talking to you, um, and just listening to uh, your perspective on on this stuff. Um, and uh, so I'll, but it it goes back to what you said at the very beginning of the podcast, um, 
this idea you used to really to, to me words that stuck out and it was like you came to, to the poet's life uh, with your background um which which with what you called was was your wealth you know from um uh, being native american from the tradition uh, traditions from the communities you were you were a part of and not a part of um um paul sent me um was it what the what would you call that your first chapter of assimilation that you sent me yeah yeah it's um it's so this is it and, and paul was talking just a, a minute ago about taking stuff seriously when it comes to other writing and um this is a free, he sent me this first chapter of of a memoir um and it and it's the title is assimilation and um it really does dig into what ch- uh, paul's uh, childhood life was like um, and it, what it ever, what that wealth is that uh, Paul talked about at the beginning of this podcast. Um, and then, and it talked about this, this chapter and I hope that someday he, I, I hope it's, he gets finished and I hope it gets subbed because I really, I really enjoyed the hell out of reading this. Um, it was good. It was, it had Paul's it had voice, it had so much voice to it. Um, so someday soon, hopefully Paul, you'll be telling us that you want to be back on the podcast because this thing just got picked up. So you talk about your wealth of what you bring to being a poet. And then you talk about perception and flipping perception on its head. Can you kind of delve into that a little bit more with that, with those first, with that first chat book um, and any reaction you got from any reaction that you, uh, any surprised reaction you got from people who read the book? Um, I, I think that, well, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've gotten like everything from I love it. It's great. Like, you know, not a whole lot of reason or, and, and, and then I've also gotten, I hated it or a lot of just, you know, maybe a couple of, you know, leading questions. Maybe I'll give something up, but I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm totally not going to give that up. And so, um, I'll, I'll get interesting if, you know, if people are kind of like, Hey, I don't know what to do with this. And, and, and to me, that's great as well, because, um, you know, some, some world views are, are going to find this uh, problematic, I guess. And uh, that's, that's fine for me um, because, you, you know, I mean, there's just as, as it goes, there's, there's such a expectation. I would say like, if I go in front of a native audience, they might, they, they might laugh at some things like, well, because, well, now this is an inside thing or because, you know, and and so my favorite places to read the thing are actually like border towns, like right near a reservation where I'm going to get like, you know, just like the regular local, like, you know, you know, my, you know, people, people have in, in a lot of these places, people have, you know, they're employed by the casino or, you know, the, they, they run into the, the, the fisheries or, you know, whatever the hell it is. And so for me, when I, when those audiences are both laughing, like at the things that I think are funny about being, um, you know, from, from two different backgrounds from like, uh, you know, these opposing experiences in a lot of places and that I can make the, the room one where it is like, you know, racial things are brought up, like the folly of kind of each other's perceptions are brought to light. And, and for me, that's like, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the best. Like I, I actually feel like, uh, I get to be my whole self and my, my sense of humor or my perspective isn't, it's not taken so seriously that like, Oh, like he hates, uh, Indians. Oh no, he hates white people. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. like, ah, oh, he's ah. like, oh, what does it mean? It's like, well, yeah, it's, it's art, you know, it's on the page. It's like, it has nothing, you know, whatever. It's like, that's yeah. like, that's the fun thing about it. Like, what are you talking about? Everyone wants to like, you know, it's, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun to do that. It's, uh, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, always know where it's going, but the, the more that I've like, I guess, worked on, um, you know, the place, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun stuff. You know what I mean? I like, I mean, it leads to other things in my life where I'm like, Oh yeah, I just, it's right there in front of me. I just have to look at it this way or move it around or uh, engage with it or, you know, put it into some more context and, then, you know, that's like, I guess the fun part of any of the artistic process is being able to just kind of like, you know, go for it and, you know, hope the best for when you land and, you know, do it enough times and keep doing it. Like, that's like, I guess that's the deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, 
and it's never something you can just you can pin down. You can, you can, but, but let, let me blab about that that, that uh, assimilation diary really quick. Oh yeah, yeah, do. I mean, and the the, the assimilation diary is something that I, I know it's. Uh, I guess it was me kind of being like, oh well, my work isn't hateable enough. Like everything's become so much, you know, either ignored, I guess, or else, um, what yeah, you know, even censored or any of the any of the kind of stuff that goes on now. But I was like. Well, these these are real things, you know. I mean, with assimilation, I I can just look at all of, you know, my my tribal family trees, and it's not it's not like, it, you definitely there's a policy out there or like a lingering policy. But then you you know you have back and forth, and but then you also have, you know, the tribal communities that change, and they're like, actually, yeah, we don't like that. Like you you know you can't be our tribe plus the enemy tribe plus like you know, and so I so I'm like, okay, well. No, I totally get it, and and for me, I'm I'm very fine with these really clinical kind of examinations of it, and and then saying, oh well, this is actually how it's like impacted my generation, my you know whatever you know, however I am identifying myself in that situation, and I don't really have a problem with that. I don't think it's like a a threat to my my uh, you know my understanding of myself, my my history, my culture, my all the way down the line. I'm I'm fine with, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, sort of accepting it because it, it looks really, it looks really difficult to try to maintain all of these different like identities and the, and the right thing. And, and so for me, I mean, it, it, it's, yeah, it's like, a I mean, as, as far as all that, that, um, kind of craziness goes, I'm fine with it. Like e- even watching like today, I'm like, yeah, well, that's what happens. You know, I mean, I don't want to be like the super party pooper, but like when everyone has decided they're all going to be like in their corners with their shivs, getting their crazy stories yeah. correct. I'm yeah. like, yeah, well, yeah, they, you know, like, you know, I don't know. No one wants any other space right now. It's just fucking, you know, identity, uh, like stuff and, um, suspicion and all, all these kind of things. So, I don't know, it's, it's, so it's, it's fun for me to just bumble with some of this stuff sometimes. Uh, but, as far as the assimilation stuff goes, I feel like I actually have to be a little bit more cautious because it's such a, it's such a, like a, you know, it's such a, a key term that it's like, just, it just keeps going, you know, and uh, you know, where that goes and where I want it to go for me is, uh, is not of uh, trying to do something I'm not, or some self hatred or, you know, trying to write all of history or, create a revolution or, you know, uh, any of these big terms that are just like complete rhetoric now is, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I mean, like, you know, I feel like if I wanted to be the artist writer who's going to tell you about, we're going to decolonize and, you know, get away from all the, oh, we're going to have, you know, I don't know what the hell, you know, whatever, whatever the idea, whatever magic thing is going to say, to them, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm like, yeah. I, I'm fine with just dealing with the words and the reality, the historical stuff, the stuff that I can understand. And, you know, I mean, I don't feel like it diminishes uh, my, my spiritual existence because I, in this crazy way where I'm denying all that stuff, trying to smash it out, not be associated with it. Like, my, yeah, too bad. You know, my process leads me back there and I'm like, Oh yeah, this is why, this is why I do this. This is like so rewarding. And, yeah. Um, I get to be a part of a community of other people that, you know, I, I don't even necessarily have to like their work or uh, any of that stuff, but I enjoy watching people try and get better and do new things and, you know, discover. To me, that's, that's, uh, that, that is pretty cool. You know, I mean, it is, it sounds a little, a little too positive out of me. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is Case Johnson. This is the literally podcast. Uh, today we had Paul Raleigh on, um, and he uh, is talking to us from Montana. Um, thanks for thanks for talking to us. I mean, this is a lot of fun. Except for we had a, a, some technical issues at the beginning, but we got it worked out. <laughs> it all worked out really good. And thanks, Paul. Um, I hope to have you on again. Um, if I'm any if any time I'm in Montana, I should t- stop by. It's a big state. I know that. Yeah, big state with. Was- a few people, so yeah, I know. Big state with very few people. It's, yeah, it's a it's a big place. Uh, well, thanks. I we appreciate it.
All right, thank you for listening to this podcast. This episode of Literally is sponsored by Lexicon and Line. Case, tell us a little something about Lexicon and Line. Uh, Lexicon and Line it does three things. They, they are com- communications consultants. They teach professional business writing and speaking courses, and they are research and data evaluation experts. And you can find everything about Lexicon and Line at lexicononline.com. Please give them a visit, and thank you so much for sponsoring this podcast, Lexicon and Line.